This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. I'm speaking on the season of acceleration and compensation. Can someone say that with me? The season of what? Acceleration and compensation. You know God is a powerful God. This Jesus is a too much Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember the 16th of January, which is my birthday, I had an encounter with the Lord. And in that encounter with the Lord, I realized that God dropped a key into my spirit. Keys open doors. And when you look at the things happening around us, we have entered, things are happening, horrible things on one side, and people are focusing on the horrible things. But where sin abounds, grace much more. Amen. You see, in Isaiah 60, it talks about, so that rise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. When there's gross darkness, God says it will arise. There are I don't think there's anybody apart from the war in Nigeria who has seen as much evil as we are seeing now. Amen? But it's a season for God to arise in your behalf. Can I get an amen? And one of the keys, one of the keys is to understand your season. Your season does not depend on what is happening around you. We're in a season of acceleration and compensation as a commission. Go with me to Amos chapter 9, verse 13. I'll read it from the uh, KJV and then from the message translation. Amos 9, 13. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. The message translation says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. Somebody say, it won't be long now. And it says, God's de decree, things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. Things are going to happen so fast, and your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere I look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. Is our God able to do this? Has he done it before? If he has done it before, he can do it again. Jesus often said to people, let it be according to your faith. I believe personally and for you in this house that we have entered a season of acceleration and compensation. Now, he said things will be happening at once, which means as people are marrying, people are giving bad jobs are happening, houses are being roofed, better jobs are coming to people, students are getting scholarship. As we are calling one, we are calling the other. As we, before we finish saying A, we say B. Before we finish B, we say Z or Z. God will just overtake us with his blessing. We have entered into a season of suddenly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 7. Now write this down. Acceleration is a manifestation of God's mercy, which is manifested 
in the speedy release of his favor upon your life. Acceleration is a manifestation of God's mercy, which is manifested in the speedy release of his favor upon your life. You know, these things will work for the person that believes it. Then Elisha says, 2 Kings 1, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall the measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt say it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. You see, in that particular case, there had been farming. If, if you read the background of the story, women were eating their children. One woman said, we ate this one child today. We are supposed to eat the other person's child tomorrow, but they will not give to eat. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. But when you are in that kind of, in dire straits like that, when you are in a difficult season like that, you need the mercy of God. What is the mercy? Mercy and compassion, they are used interchangeably in Scripture. It means to love tenderly. It means to pity. It means to be full of eager yearning. And what I want to say to you, no matter your season, no matter what has been going on before now, God is yearning eagerly to bring an acceleration into your life and bring an end to that misery in your life. You are not too old to get married. Your history is not so bad that somebody will not find you. I don't know who I came to speak about mercy to this morning, but I'm saying you are not too old to get married. It's not too bad that God cannot find a way into your situation. God will change the story of your children. God will change the story of your family. God is going to turn it around because in the season of acceleration, the the angels begin to come up and down. God is looking for people he can, he can breathe upon. I'm saying to the Lord, breathe upon my people today. Let there be an acceleration in their finances. Let there be an acceleration in their career. Let there be a lifting up in their life. God turn it around. Let the barren become a mother of children. The one they say is too old. Father, let there be an acceleration for everybody under the sound of my voice today. Can you shout a better amen to the Lord? In the book of Exodus chapter 3, from verse 20, remember the children of Israel had been in captivity to 22. And I'll stretch out my hand and smite Egypt <laughs> with all my wonders which I do in the midst thereof. And after, after that, he will let you go. And I'll get these people, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you shall go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her, of her that sojourneth in her house. Jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Psalm 102, verse 13 and 14. Psalm 102, 13 and 14. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servant take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. The message translation, Exodus 12, 33 says, The Egyptians could not wait to get rid of them. They pushed them to hurry up, saying, We are all as good as dead. Friends, in this season, the things that have been hindering you will begin to give way. The person that said, you know, I've been preaching nonstop, came back from Port Harcourt, and I've been preaching since. You know, Exodus 12, 36, the message translation says, God saw to it <clears throat> that the Egyptians liked the people and so readily gave them what they asked for. Oh, yes, they picked those Egyptians clean. In this season, 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 the person that said they will not approve that contract, for some reason they will look at your paper again and they will see the face of God. The person that said they closed the door against you, in this season they will look at that child again and say we have a space for this child in this university. 
in this season where there was a oh my lord where there was a hole in your pocket he said by this time tomorrow the famine will come to an end if i didn't hear god i won't come here and be telling you i had god he said he has moved us into a season of acceleration he has remembered your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. I want you to join your faith with me this morning. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your house. But God told me to tell restoration. And those who can release their faith. Uh, that he can make things happen. He can make the, the Syrians to hear a noise. When the prophet Elisha declared that word. He said it. And some people heard it. He said it. The enemies heard it. He said it. The lepers heard it. I want to say even those who have conspired against you. They will hear the word of the Lord this week. They will release your money. They will release your product. They will release release what you need to be released because God is full of eager yearning to visit you, to visit your family, to visit your children. I want to declare to a child of God this morning, there shall be a turn around in our story. There shall be a turn around in our story. They may be crying all over Nigeria, but God will do it for you. God will do it for your children. There shall be a lifting up in your life. If you believe it, give him a shout of amen in the house of God. Please sit down for a bit. The children of Israel, 430 years, no salary. No overtime. They use them anyhow. God said, I see. They happen to be my children. Do you know God, God is more eager for us to be healed than we ourselves want? He's more eager for us to be saved than we ourselves want? He wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit more than you want to be baptized. Why? Because he paid for it. When you pay for books in school, they don't give the child a book. You want to fight them. Say, we paid for books. Where are the books? We paid for uniform. Why is this child not having uniform? Jesus paid and it was credited into your account. And let me say to you, child of God, everything tormented you. They did not make the resurrection. Poverty did not make the resurrection. Sickness did not make the resurrection. Because when Jesus died, we were there. You say, how can I be there? It happened thousands of years ago. I said, we were there when he died. The Bible says we were buried with him. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. In the mind of God, because he was our substitute, when he went on the cross, we went to the cross. When he was buried, we were buried. When he rose up, we rose up. And we, when, we, when we rose up with him, poverty did not make the resurrection. That thing trying to worry you did not make the resurrection. God, so we are not here to beg God to do what he has done. We have been lifted above that thing. But all we are saying is that, Lord, I believe in the spirit of acceleration and compensation. I know you are moved with compassion. You want to touch my family and I'm here this morning to raise a praise to your name. I'm here this morning to lift my hand and shout to your name to say God is able, God is willing to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. Do we have some praisers in the house? Do we have some people that believe this their God can turn it around in 24 hours? How many of you believe that this your God can turn it around in 24 hours? If you believe that, give him a shout of praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Hey! Somebody praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what the Lord told me. He said we've come into a season of acceleration and compensation. And you, before the end of this year, some things will happen your mouth will not be able to close. Me, I believe it for myself. Oh. Otherwise, what sense does it make for the prophet Elisha to give a word, lepers who could not enter town. They didn't even know why they did it. If we enter the town, if we stay here, we may die. Well, let's cuckoo go to these Egyptians. If they save us, fine. If they kill us, at least we'll eat before we die. God will do some things in your life if you mix faith with what I'm saying this morning. You see, those who are expecting nothing get nothing. You see, you, 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 Elisha believed what he said. Elisha believed what he said. There are a lot of stories I can show you in the Bible. I won't rush this message because faith comes by hearing. Lepers had it in the spirit. I want to say every obstacle in your life has had it in the spirit. 
they have heard that God is full of eager yearning to reach you. All right. Let, let me take this one. The plate is full. God compresses time to bring about acceleration in your life. God compresses time. Go to John chapter 2 from verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, uh, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they, had, when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Mama. Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone. You see, let me tell you, you have to mix your faith with what I'm saying this morning. After all, you have believed for a long time. But God is saying, I'm accelerating the thing. Eh? Verse 6. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the profile of the Jews, containing two or three fire kings apiece. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they, were, and they filled them to the brim. And Jesus said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have drunk, well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. The good wine is for you now. God compresses time. The people that know about making wine, they suggested that for you to, from the time you plant the grapes and all the, you know, till you crush and all that, and the process, they said between four and eight years. Some people have said that. Now, Jesus' mother must have believed in this law of acceleration. She didn't go to Jesus and say, eh, my son, can you send your treasurer to get money to help us with this party? Mary was believing for something supernatural. I don't know what you are believing for. I am believing for God to move in a supernatural way this morning when I pray for you. Otherwise, what's the point of miracles? Uh, wine has finished. Uh -huh now, I'm not the owner of the party. If wine finished, meet the people that are married to go and buy wine now. But this woman believed in the law of acceleration. She believed that Jesus could do something. I'm talking about people that need a now miracle. By this time tomorrow type of miracle. Of course, Jesus said, well, mother, you know, slow, slow. Take it easy, mother. Well, there's a way your mother will speak to you. She doesn't have to say much. You know you have to do it. Your mother can say, that, that, you know that your cousin that you grew up together? Eh, they say his mother, his wife is sick in the hospital. She didn't say you should give money. But common sense will tell you that mama is making an indirect. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? That, say, that your classmates. Eh, in the picking day hospital, your mother didn't say give money. But if you're intelligent and you're a Nigerian, <laughs> already mama is saying, help. Or your wife said, eh, this is our neighbor next door. It looks like the children, they have been not been eating for some days now. You don't need a prophet to tell you, release some gari and rice for that person. So that was the kind of thing that the mother did. And Jesus knew that mama wants a miracle. Yeah, like Jesus. He was listening to his parents. Some of you, your parents cannot see anything. Say, daddy, you are analog. I agree I'm analog. But I'm still your father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now analog, I take boy you. <laughs> <laughs> if you are computer age, we were analog. It's okay. Anyway, so how is Jesus going to create this miracle? He said, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. 
which means I have a role to play in that acceleration. I have a role to play in that acceleration. You can always take your next step of obedience. Tell somebody, take your next step of obedience. If you don't know anything else to do, faith is released in two ways, by saying and by doing. If the least you can do is, Father, I thank you for acceleration and compensation in my business. If you will say that with faith every day, with thanksgiving every day, you will see it. I said you will see it. But in this case, Jesus said, you see those six uh, water pots? Fill them with water. Ah. Fill them with water. So they start filling. Start filling. I don't know at what point it turned into wine. But I'm sure when they fetched the water, they didn't fetch wine. They fetched water. Maybe as they poured it in or when they were drawing it out. But a miracle happened in the process of their obedience. Child of God, what was the last thing God told you to do? Did you do it? Amen. Now, we've been talking about what God will do. We are all excited. But what about us? Most of the time, it's not something big. It can be a little thing like this. It's a fill the pots. Everybody can draw water now. They, they did it. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen? Fill the pots with water. And they did. You see, you will do your part, then God will finish the rest. Don't hang around people that don't believe you will see that miracle. There was a man in that second king seven. He said, well, if God should make window in heaven, can this thing be, if God should rain down husbands, can you get, tell them, say, my own, my own is already arrested for me. Amen. Don't hang around people who are so negative. They are, they are always seeing bloodshed. If they don't see bloodshed, they see poverty. These people are not your friends. Hang around, the man that said, if God opened window, they didn't, in fact, when people were going to pack the things, the Bible said they trampled the man on the ground. In your season of acceleration and compensation, you need to be far from naysayers. You know naysayers? Cannot happen. You are too old. You are too old. Who will help you? My help cometh from the Lord. I said my help cometh from the Lord. I said, 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 my help cometh from the Lord. And just like play, just like play, the thing turned to wine. Now, in this season of acceleration, your best wine and your best days they are not behind you, they are in front of you. Amen. I say your best wine and your best days are not behind you, they are in front of you. Amen. If God is willing to do it, then I must be filled with expectation. You see, when people are not filled with expectation, people say, mm. so, maybe, no, I'm not in that maybe club. I'm one of those that believe that God has shown me mercy. I'm one of those that believe that I have received the mercy of the Lord. I'm one of those that believe that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Has God done it before? I said, has God done it before? Has God done it before? At this wedding, at this wedding, at this wedding of Cana, in fact, this is the first recorded miracle. And it has to do with acceleration. Speed. How many of you can do with some speed in your business? In your finances? upon your children you can do with some speed in your life right now when I begin to pray today you will take something or some things because I'm carrying grace this morning I'm carrying grace to release something upon your life today but you got to believe in it you got to believe in it and it will happen for you in the name of Jesus so as they obeyed the word of the Lord, the wine came. They saw the wine. The wine came. Something that was not there. Something that they ran out of it. 
I mean, they run. If you run out of gas in your house, you must go and buy gas. But that is something is already there. But wine has to be manufactured. That gas is already prepared, though, that you are going to buy. They've pumped it in. You are just collecting it. If you run out of fuel, you say, the meter is reading red. Let me enter fuel station. I want you to see the bigness of this miracle. It's big. Jesus took ordinary water. He didn't bless the wine that was remaining. Oh, Lord, give somebody revelation. He didn't say, okay, bring some of the wine you have. Like in the case of five loaves and two fishes. Let's break it and multiply it. He created wine. Ah, I pray for you this morning that your faith will rise. That that which you need, heaven will create it on your own account. That God will create it on your own account. He created it. He didn't bless what was there and multiply. He created what was not there. He's the God of acceleration. We're in a season of acceleration. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. There's always something you can do. You have to take that next step of obedience. There are many examples of this in the word of God. But we'll take it bit by bit. Hallelujah. Determine the size of your miracle by the size of your seed. Mm. You know, he told them in John 2, 7, fill the water pots with water and they filled them to the brim. Somebody said to the brim. Somebody can give you a bucket of water, half. If they had put half, half in that pot, what would they get? Half water pot of wine. But they filled it to the brim. So how many pots they gave Jesus was how many he, he created for them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Somebody say, can say, well, I don't really know what to do. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. But let me read one scripture before I pray this morning. Which means... There's another example we have from another scripture. But let me stay with this one. So it's not too much for you. Go to 2 Chronicles 20. Those who praise God for his mercy experience accelerated intervention. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21 and 22. And when he had consulted with the people... He appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord, what? For his mercy endured forever. What were they saying? God, I praise you because you are willing. You are willing. You are yearning to show mercy, to show love to me. That was a summary of their song. And when they began to sing and to praise, not before, the Lord sent ambushments against the, ch the children of Ammon, Moab, and Monsia, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Your praise this morning will bring about that acceleration that you need. I say your praise this morning will bring about that acceleration that you need. And it shouldn't just be what you are doing today in church. As you sit in your house and those bills are flashing before you. As you sit in your house and those mountains are flashing before you. Just lift your hand and say, Father, I thank you for your acceleration and compensation in my business. I'm seeing something in the Spirit of God. Let me tell you, child of God, if you will do what I'm saying, in faith, in thanksgiving, you will not end this year without you seeing the intervention of God supernaturally. If you begin to praise him, three armies gathered against Jehoshaphat. They were, they, they, he was outnumbered, outgunned, out <laughs> weaponed, whichever way you want to say. 
But when he began to praise God for his mercy, you see, intervention is about the mercy of God. You are eating each other's children, and the prophet has spoken, and God said, when he spoke, I spoke, I want to do something. Only lepers could hear it. And when lepers had it, lepers brought deliverance. I'm saying to somebody who can hear this morning, there's a need for you to lift your hand in this house under the sound of my voice and say, Father, I praise you for your mercy over my life. Things may not look the way I want it, but God you have been merciful before now it's time for you to arise child of God and lift those hands this morning and say father I praise you for your mercy upon my life I praise you for your mercy upon my family why don't you lift your hand everybody and begin to thank him call your children by name call your business by name there are some things pressing for this week there are some things on the front burner of your heart lift your voice and say daddy I praise you for your mercy upon me upon my family I lift you up. I praise you for your mercy. I praise you for your merciful intervention. Lift your voice this morning, wherever you are, and then I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, and God is going to visit us in a way we have never seen it before. Lift your hand. Everybody stand. Lift your hand. It's time. It's time to praise him. It's time to give him that hallelujah. It's time to lift your voice this morning. Oh, la ra ba 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 Let the Lord hear our our three hallelujah shout this morning hallelujah hallelujah keep those keep those hands up as I pray father in the name of Jesus everyone under the sound of my voice you said we've come into a season of acceleration and compensation Lord you know where we need the acceleration this morning I hear the word before the end of the month, the big one will drop. Yes, I hear the word before the end of the month, the big one will drop. And I'm seeing a lot of droppings also in that month of November. They are just falling. They are falling all over the places. Falling all over the places. They are falling. Father, I decree acceleration in businesses. I decree compensation, acceleration in offices. I decree acceleration in families. Over fathers, mothers, children. Over students, over young ones. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy be manifest now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I release the angels of our acceleration and compensation. I say, go forth now and begin to work for your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, as your people go out this week, I decree and declare that the highest sacrifice on the highest altar by the highest being with the highest name, the Lord Jesus Christ himself has been off offered for us. We don't owe the devil anything. Jesus has died our death and we are far above principalities and powers. So I bind you from our people's path. No violence in their homes, no violence in their offices, no violence on the road, no violence in the highway, no violence in the byway, no violence in the air, no violence over the sea, no violence wherever they go, I decree by the blood you go in safety and compensation and acceleration is your portion in the name of Jesus. Can you give a Lord a shout of amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.